Hello everyone, I'm Hugo Nel Boris from HugoNelBorisFineArt.com um, Today we are going to do a still life. i am already started to draw an outline of what you can see on my iPad on the left. Uh, this is from um, a still, li still life I've done um, before. Um, I took pictures of my um, um, my still, li still life and that's what we are going to do together today. So for the background I use uh, a mixture of um, uh, ultramar ultramarine blue and um, burnt sienna and which I gonna put loosely on the background um, then I let it dry and uh, the next day I'll um, draw an outline as you can see of what I can see in front of me uh, that mixture is um, again the same mixture uh, ultramarine and burnt sienna but a little more ultramarine this time to darken it slightly so painting uh, the shadows mostly and um, and then um, putting in um, the figures uh, on from the still life I always paint the dark in first So the um, the support I'm painting on, if you wonder, is um, MDF. It's a six millimeter MDF that I uh, previously primed with a uh, uh, white uh, oil painting, um, and the size of it is 16 by 12 inch. So I add a, a cloth there to add a bit of interest. As you can see, this is not in uh, my uh, uh, set out on the left there on my iPad. You can't see a cloth. I also decided I will put this on a thick marble table. Still only drawing out the darkest darks. So I hope that this tutorial will help some of you on maybe seeing on um, a way to approach uh, still lives. Or I will uh, I approach my still lives always this way. For the color palette, left to right, we are using titanium white, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre cadmium orange, alizarin crimson, red oxide, burnt sienna, burnt umber, blue ultramarine, cobalt blue, veridrin green, sap green and uh, uh, some ivory black. I always make two greys as well um, on the side to um, neutralize some um, colors if I need to. Uh, so here for the background uh, we have a mix of uh, the burnt umber, um, burnt sienna and a touch of black. I personally like to paint on dark brown, dark brown blackish um, backgrounds.
here to the left side I'm adding a little a very little bit of white to lighten one side so one side be darker than the other this will give a bit of depth in um, the painting so I like to start with the background first also I forgot to mention um, that I've got uh, a medium and um, uh, my medium is um, liquid original sometimes I also use the gel the, the gel uh, original the brushes I use are mostly uh, filbert flush brushes um, different sizes it varies from um, 4 to um, 16 I always like to use the biggest brushes first so now we moved on to the table so as you can see there is a difference in color I'm introducing some uh, yellow ochre in the mix uh, on one side so again we can't see and uh, I know some of you will ask me uh, or tell me that it would have been better if we can see uh, the mixes of color but I I went into a habit with my other videos on my French channel uh, not to show the mixes only because that forces you to uh, work on your on your mixing colors and that will help you tremendously to um, to get better as well so I'm gonna give you um, hints on what I put color wise but I'm not always going to show you exactly um, how I mix my colors or what I do to to mix my colors however some videos you will have uh, you will see exactly what I take or what I mix especially in my landscape and now I've got a new format where I can have a uh, I've, I've got a, a palette who fits into my frame as well uh, not as wide and, and you can see a little bit uh, how I mix or what I use and how I mix my colors so going on to the uh, table so um, uh, to the mix to the make original mix add a little bit more uh, white and warm it up a little bit with um, yellow ochre to have you know like a grey and uh, darken it just underneath with a more uh, darker black brown brown black um, to give it the depth so I think all my darkest darks are in and I recommend you to to always start with your darkest darks when you do uh, oil paintings does work better this way to add your lights to the darks it also gives you a good value to start with but you already can see the forms how the forms appearing there so again here working on the darks of the leaves
I also put in the shadows so when I put in the grapes the shadows the darks they follow shadow from the pear and the apple shadow of the other grape and the leaf So in this painting I keep my shadows warm you can play with your shadows depending on what light you use have them cool or warm in general if you've got a warm light um, it um, results on cool uh, shadows and uh, cold light results on the warm shadow So thereby adding that little light in between the apple and the pear gives you a little bit, just a tiny bit more depth. It just um, gets the apple in the front of the pear. Now here I was checking um, the color straight onto my uh, iPad it doesn't have to be much has have to be matching perfectly but if you um get um it uh, as near as you can to start with that will help for the for the whole of the painting So don't overwork your paint, just try to work out um, the colour and just uh, add it in like into blobs and then you work the edges. You always tend to have a roughly three colors and then uh, the lights on top of it so there we got a light green uh, a dark green and uh, then we go into browns as well, well that's three three colors to get um, the roundness of the pair as well there we are adding the shadow of the leaf So here, that's I'll show you roughly, you know, the, how I proceed um, with my colors, having, you know, using different um, um, pools of colors, and then um, just laying them next to each other to see the relationship with each other before I put them on the. Um, on the canvas itself or a board here um, but again uh, it, it would be maybe helpful for some of you for me to show you how I do the mix but uh, really it's uh, an individual thing and it would make your work a bit more um, and get used to do your own mix after a while you don't think anymore on or I uh, this is green so I need uh, to have uh, some yellow and some blue in there or um, or for an orange to have red and yellow etc you just you, you don't think this way anymore what do you think you think about I've got a green and I need to warm it up or cool it down and even so it just automatic you just 
take a little bit of one color, add it and match it as as the best as you can. Um, what I'm trying to say there that is if you practice uh, you will get there, you will uh, not overthink it anymore and it will become natural to you. So I, I do think that I help you more and it'd be better for you if I don't show you how to mix some colors but you will have to figure it out by yourself and it will be um, it will be a big help to you I promise you you will struggle a little bit maybe to start with but at the end the result uh, will be um, very big and you you won't regret it you um, it will become second nature to you again don't you don't have to keep the same colors uh, that uh, you can see on that palette you know I attempt to use some uh, browns then a couple of greens a couple of blues warm and cold generally that's why I do a, a warm uh, brown and a cool brown a warm green and a cool green etc etc um, but that's not necessary you can just use the basic um, uh, y yellow uh, red blue uh, and white that's all you you need and then add some whatever you use um, in your uh, painting in your in your uh, subject add a couple of color if it helps or or don't okay let's go back to our painting there so I have mixed some red with alizarin crimson and some cadmium red so now we get the darkest or the mid-tone of the apple because it's not the darkest, the mid-tone and then the the highlight of the of the apple so again as, as I say three tones uh, one for the dark one for the middle tone and one for the highlights don't forget to break the edges um, so I soften the edges a bit uh, later I don't worry too much to start with um, I just try to put my um, colors in and then after that I soften the edges So there we got a bit a uh, reflection of the um, of the table. So a bit of ochre in the in the apple, in the lower portion of the apple. And there is a strong light coming in too. See uh, now here I'm I'm softening. Um, the left side there of the pair with a clean brush and then um, you go try nearly to make it disappear with the back background I'm working the background into my subject and I do that with with everything uh, what is nearest the background is a soft edge and uh, I attempt to work it in with my subject like I just did with a pair and then with the apple on the right side here I work the apple the edge with the background it also looks um, less like a sticker you know if you keep sharp edges it just looks like uh, you you have stuck on uh, the apple or the pear 
uh, by um, integrating it in the within the background uh, you make it become part of the whole painting bit of reflective light there just on the side on the edge and then darken the shadows a little bit so work it back and forth um, here we've got the shadow of the pear so dark shadow because that's where the pear sits on that gives you the separation as well from the pear to the apple now we start to put a highlight on the leaf as well the darker uh, shadow bit on the on the left don't be afraid to go dark um, we always, always want to um, highlight everything, make everything come, um, but um, come to light. But then that would um, put everything in one level as well. So don't be afraid to darken things, because that will make um, the mid tone and the highlight sparkle. Then. Well, anyway, I um, so this one is um, I think three times the speed. Um, I will make uh, some uh, uh, tutorial uh, with maybe just one subject where I'm going to paint in uh, real time, so you can follow a little better on the technique. Um, but we are. Uh, just going to do you know single subjects like just paint an apple or paint a grape or paint a pear or, or whichever subject or paint a vase or whichever um, maybe on a bit of a smaller um, smaller um, canvas and then um, we can do it in uh, real time so maybe you will benefit a bit uh, better from it especially for the very beginners what I like with the iPad is just so I um, zoomed in and that um, gives me a chance to see some details which I could not see if I would uh, paint it from my uh, still life support you know on the bench uh, which I do but um, not today um, so I kind of like um, the iPad as well because I can zoom in and give a bit more details on some of the uh, foreground um, elements. So there is a leaf but it is quite dark so it doesn't show really on, on the video there. But there is a couple of leaves there stuck behind the the pear because that branch comes from the right side and goes on the back of the pear so yeah we can't really see it and it is quite into shadow but nevertheless it gives you a really good uh, depth in your paint and it is there if you really really pay attention you s you can see just about can see a couple of leaves appearing in the back there So let's uh, go to the cloth. Uh, so the cloth is a bit of mauveish paint or purple. Some would say it's purple. It's a very light purple. I call it mauve. So give it the mid tone color, like with every subject. Give it a mid tone tone color so a mid purple and then add the shadows 
by warming the color up a little bit and um, and the highlights here we are so you put the creases in put the shadows on the side very dark shadow to start with to separate the cloth from the table and then just soften it as you go on the side to make it uh, the shadow so this is a, a, a brush um, flat brush that I use uh, with uh, a dry just to soften so every time I soften I use um, a, um, a dry brush but a soft dry brush I want to do the edges or if I want to soften the color uh, don't forget to wipe it in between or every time so they're real uh, hair brush, no, not soft. They they're mongoose hair, so they're soft or weasel. Um, so they're very soft hair. They just put a bit of highlight on top, as you can see. Put a little bit of highlight onto the pear to give it its form, its roundness. Just by giving little highlights, there, it just gives you that little roundness of the pear, which is uh, um, nice to see. And you've got that shadow of the leaf coming onto the pear, and a different shadow of the pear itself on the side where it turns. So you need to think about all that soft edges, hard edges, soft shadows, hard shadows all that um, will contribute on the depth and uh, and on the form of your subject darken the shadow a little bit here and we soften it to give it the form to the side so here I'm sitting down I like to sit down um, for still lives so this is the first part and we are going to let it dry now for a couple of days and then I come back in uh, lesson two um, and we are going to finish the painting so I'll see you in a little bit in uh, number two yeah all right I'll see you there bye <laughs>